forest shade. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under Radiant attack. Radiant are scattered. <laughs> Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is 
Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Middle Tower is under attack.
Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack.
Middle Tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Middle Tower is under Radiant. attack. Our scan. <laughs> Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen.
Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. scanning. Middle Tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack.
middle tower is under Radiant attack. Are scattered. <laughs> under attack. under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower attacked. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Bottom tower is under attack. 
Middle Tower is under attack. Middle Tower is under Radiant. attack. Our scan. <laughs> Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. <coughs> Dire team back. Radiant team back.
Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again. We're here taking a look at the Cyber.Bet Cup Spring Series. It's the U region. It is all happening today. Live and in fact, and what is today in fact? So that way you know that it's live. It is, Unless you think that somehow we were able to go back in time, have Viking G play OGC, then I was going to preemptively say it is May 6th, 7 37 a.m in the morning uh, on the west coast of the united states then you will believe back there's a real game of dota 2 guys it's all happening right now right here live i can gg what more could you want honestly what more could you want oh some good stuff um so a little bit of backstory as to where we are currently in the cyber cup uh cyber.bet cup rather um there's been a couple of games that have got played. It's sort of been a little bit of a weird series of events that's gone on for this uh, tournament because there were a couple of matches that happened really early on out of the get-go uh, of this. And those happened on like, I want to say the 11th or something like that, the 11th or 12th. And then there was a long break. Um, there are other tournaments that are going on. Some of these playing in them. You couldn't get the matches to get scheduled. One second, I want to take a sip of my coffee. I invite you to do the same if you have a warm wonderful beverage in front of you or then that's delicious and cool whatever you're feeling grab a little sip real quick oh that's perfect. that's exactly what i want remaining um so the those matches got played early on then there was a little bit of a break and then just yesterday we started back up again uh with finishing off the quarterfinals for the uh which was aggressive mode versus Radiant empire hope where aggressive mode were able to take the series two uh, and then Namiga Gaming, who got knocked down to the lower bracket by uh, OG, also were able to take the series 2-1 over Team Heroic. So a three-game series in both of the previous games that we had yesterday was pretty hype. Um, I was down for that one. That was pretty cool. Today, we have the continuation of the upper bracket. So it's semifinals matchup. Viking GG. For my money, I'm kind of feeling like these are the top right now in the bracket at least and they're on the same bracket which is kind of unfortunate because i feel like they're really uh very strong i would not be surprised to see meeting again in the grand and remember double elimination tournament uh the grand finals is going to be best of five uh it's going to take place on may so what is that that's actually voting day world where you're voting very soon you go out there and vote primary but um but yeah Best of five grand finals on May itself. Actually, not sure if I'm casting that one. Ten <laughs> but somebody will be, and it's probably going to be a rematch of this match. We're going to go back and look, see what happened in it. Um, we can kind of do a similar thing because these two played each other just 24 days ago. Uh, that was in the Wushka League, where uh, Viking.gg off against OG. We're able to take the series 2 1. Uh, Viking GG won the first game. Uh, and they did it off the back of Mars. Um, that s seemed like it was sort of the reoccurring theme in their drafts was picking Mars or Timbersaw or something that's like big team uh, monstrosity. You can seconds, hear already man. that the uh, Timbersaw banned out. Mars still left in the pool. That hero's kind of, I think, popularity a little bit. And all that Radiant fun stuff team. that went on with it. Don't think it was the biggest nerfs in the world, um, but it was something that was on. So, so far, what we're seeing here Chen get taken I believe that was banned out in every single they played against Dia should also mention right before this game started Celery uh, said in all chat to feed um, not just the how can you even touch Madara copy pasta but also that full divide question mark Pexu is like G so they're 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 down for it we're we're run at you Dota today that's what's gonna happen absolute we're gonna get going um pangalier taken with witch doctor for og seconds remaining pretty interesting start here it's kind of like I, I i think of these two heroes in sort of a similar way as far as their team fight contribution um they both kind of have like awkward occasionally amazing disable you know or occasionally really underwhelming <laughs> disable that's kind of how i view both of them you get like two heroes stuck together cast and it's just like a doom scenario against the witch doctor. Likewise, you can just get caught. And I think what Cap described one time at the zone where 
uh, you're just bouncing back and forth Dire the team. mid uh, the, the mid area where uh, he's going up to high ground um, where you're just constantly chain stunned by or you can like miss your roll or accidentally somebody like I do a lot and then you're suddenly in this situation where it's like doing nothing or your cask doesn't bounce to anybody you know what I mean and then also they have this like other form of like just high damage coming out but all of the damage so far from OG all physical um you look at this like yes there are some magical components uh Ten seconds damage remaining. that lands from rolling thunder is is magical but it's kind of like limited right five seconds he bounces on, on somebody before your thunder is going to wear out and it's not like a ridiculous amount Mal maledict is magical yes but it's like you need damn it or you need damage to start off that train extra damage that they really have to throw into it like a death ward or something physical and now clink's taken he's pretty much all physical so something i'd be a little bit if i'm OG I have that like nice mixed damage that being said if you do start off on a really fast train with this clan like we've seen here uh some team do, um he can just be an absolute as it stands right now this is a hell of a good ghost scepter game for Viking. if they can get to it not that that's like what you necessarily want to have to build but you know i'll watch for um i guess the other thing is that oftentimes again heroes you'd want to build something like a guardian grief and because chen's probably going to build the it's not going to be able to get the guardian griefs quick enough so that's the dynamic of it too maybe they're taking advantage of that i would like to see viking.gg take something that mitigates physical damage or just a high armor hero or sin guard any of those types of things that all sounds really nice Dire team. i mean it's a high armor hero uh, like the Luna, it's a crazy early Luna. Pay. Wow, I guess one of the things is that these low HP heroes early Luna is a nice mixture of the physical and magical damage. Ten seconds remaining. I've seen a couple of Lunas recently. Like, <laughs> you know what it is? I feel like remaining. after a TZ streams, you just play a hero a couple of times, then all this there's a lag delay, and then a couple days later start seeing a bunch of other carries playing maybe it's you know the other way everybody's reacting to the spreads it probably is probably just you know i've got going in my coffee highly would recommend it unless it's getting late where you are after 12 no caffeine a good rule So we've got Luna team pick. taken. And Dire team back. Mars. Viking GG, this pick. Such good. This is what I was talking about. Like big tanky person mitigates the damage that's coming in. Bulwark it up. That meat shield in front of your team. Huh. 10 seconds remaining. Oh. Five seconds remaining. Oh, be tough. yeah. So, again, maybe you can just overwhelm them with. Yes. Radiant team ban. But if you build somebody now that's a mid laner that builds like an. like just a high magical i like the quap ban i think that that would have been the perfect pick because it like also helps you set the tempo the thing about this liking from viking.gg is also that they are going to like death ball group up mode get around the map take down objectives Ten i think if you're ogc the you really want to try and focus on okay where how, how are we going to like dominate the because i would be super concerned about viking gg even with just the four heroes they have like grouping together at around that you know, 17, five minute mark and how much map they claim. I think if you're Viking GG right now, you start to think about heroes that one, uh, can play at a fast tempo, but set up Roche. This, this seems like a pretty good TA game. The only problem is that you're playing against a bunch of heroes that TA doesn't necessarily want to play against either. But you can catch back up in the jungle. I think it's actually an okay TA game. Fits with the rest of what their heroes wanted ending the game. 
not that they have to, but that they they can, I guess. Maybe it's going all too all in on that. Radiant but I wouldn't mind it. Pick. Down the puck. Storm spirit. Okay, so it's not a Roche taker, but it's also it kind of gives them a little bit later game potential. Fully on the not that they would have been if they would have picked Yay, but I think that you're less on the clock than you are with the storm. It has a greater avenue to grow. Ten seconds remaining. And I, I guess the other thing is that like pre or post oak orchid from that's what he wants to that all the time but any type of a disabled combo together with the clan and yeah he's dead storm spirit might be able to live OG seed one eight Silencer, but then your your clinks isn't. A yeah, it probably has to be. It have to be a position three. Is it a position or the pango and then mid? I I could definitely see. Break playing the uh, the pango. You may now select your hero. So they're just gonna yes, yeah, so they are gonna go for tiny mid. I'm assuming this is going to be a chessy tiny. Yeah. Freak clink. So this is the the crit style. Interesting. Th this feels like it fits with Z Freak's play style as well. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into it. Cyber dot cup. Cyber dot bet cup. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Cyber dot bet cup. Live in full effect here. Viking dot gg. As I said, potentially an aperitif. Or what could be another grand finals appearance yeah. that man that luna set is awesome that thing is so cool i want to check Ten that out what's that shield remaining. is that shield an immortal i definitely i have the glaives i, I have that five shield. seconds remaining sucker for sets another watch doctor is always a classic i like the mushroom staff say i don't feel like the it is that down here on this thing i don't think that that would be standing so still i feel like that'd be like dripping and going all over the you know what i mean this but it looks also like it looks paper mache this looks like a cosplay <laughs> that's, what, that's what this looks like like witch doctor's cosplaying but whatever whatever you guys know what i meant all right Let's see how they do it. Can Boom and Shad pull it together? Freak Clinks just run around the map and make magic. It feels like you've got a great potential to play this storm. That's one thing that's going to be super interesting about this, right? Like, Crinks plays this sort of Ricky or a bounty hunter, or maybe a Nyx assassin is the better analogy. And then you have Chessie rotate over, or try and blow up, and then you get that extra little damage coming right on top of them. And you're going to be able to do that sort of scouting uh, mercenary work on this clink so much better than those other heroes because you've got way more movements skeleton walk so that's kind of a cool type of thing that they're going to be able to do the, the worry that i have for me if viking.gg get out of the laning stage at an okay it? tempo i worry they're just going to play around this chen all the heals that he's got like they're they're never going to split up they're just going to destroy him over and over and over again well, we'll have Scratch to wait and see good luck have fun have fun have fun have fun look at that what a nice guy scratch that idea shield look at that that's so i feel like she should see the clink through the tree the vision each other and they're gonna wonder if that's a thing I'm going to showcase seconds to battle. trees that sounds awesome that's the next level. do you think that would be broken if you were pov you know and then you could like be oh god there's all these like particles coming out of the roche pit look at them they're over there they're right over there i can see them all 
right, what do we got now? Zara trying to step forward, see if he can test for the bounty runes. Thinking about it, but Zibe's over here, and if he does go down that hill, world of hurt. They're just gonna trade it off. Rubik Mars versus Hairblade Witch Doctor. This sounds like an annoying lane for Hairblade. Holy crap. That's a lot of burst. Z Freak starting. This is like kind of been one of the. I feel like point I saw Clinks run. That looked awful. <laughs> Gonna be also a lane just. Trying to maximize the region since he's got this chin. The Holy Persuasion level. So it's going to be a little bit, especially because he took that creep, it's going to be a little bit before he gets favor. Whatever, it's fine. Love good region. I got some tangos to make right at the start. Level one, Dyer's taking Metamorphosis, coming on for and contesting. Off one of those barriers. Nicely done. Celery in it. Lunar Blessing, damage for 15%, not bad. A little bit of bonus there, but Celery, has he overextended? Man is in some trouble to slow down. Do they have anything brought down low, but not low enough to kill? Chen, go back up. Top lane, Hexu, he's taking a beating. Be able to make his out of there. Beating back, back and forth, no kills yet though. Mid lane, Storm Spirit. Three denies down on Kessie. Oftentimes when I think of tinies and always limp that sort of comes to mind, but brother a couple tricks here and there. Toby? Play? Fine. Move mid. Oh. Very close. Get up there and break the salve either so Chessie gets of the region and it's not it's not an easy matchup early on it does have level three saving that point and finds an avenue to try and go for a pullback he has enough freaking base damage to deny that i did not know that about tiny that's insane you normally can't get that on the double tower hit in the meantime Freak just continuing to be a bit of a butthead, but Celery can kind of just shrug it off continuously. This regen coming in. Salve, another tango ready to go as well. Yeah, this is frustrating territory, I'm sure, for OGs. Because no put out, like, it's just so much regen. Seven regen passively in the lane. Like, what the hell? That's even before tangos. 7.5 before tangos balanced <laughs> the fact that you can just pick this hero and that's what you so insanely broken oh celery though region you got if you're gonna go down dead and z freak drawing first blood gets the kill need to see death pack takes over the creep turns around throws in the and that is a great victory for og seed being able to get that first blood Pretty good stuff, I would say, across the board early on here for, uh, it is Toby. Trouble. Just as I say it, they find another kill there in the bottom. They did take down Zibby afterwards, but finding a couple of different kills and then they decide to tip Aramis. Interesting. So I don't know if you guys saw it. I was casting with, uh, with Motel and Seb and I had a moment where I was like, you know, is it more worth it to tip the person that dies or tip their teammate? Um, and particularly in that instance, it was an oracle. And I, it was like the idea being that you try and like sow a little bit of discord team, right? Like you're like, oh, you should have saved me there. And that, you know, that's the in initial thought. And then you tip the other guy to like help back up that that ingrained mental attitude. I wonder if there's some 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 high level mental warfare going on here in the OG seed team with the tips. They're evolving to the next level of tilting tipping. That's what we're seeing here. But Aramis, he's like, Look, don't worry. Not, we're not concerned about this. We're not gonna let their guile us. 
Pexu taking a lot of damage here. Boom. Oh my God, did he get the rune? Dude, it's so worth it. It's so worth it for the Witch Doctor right there. He gets the bounty rune. Chessie's gonna move over, be able to pick up another one. OG seed. Like I said, off to a hot start. All Shad. Down Zibe here, Z Freak. The death pack, but Celery is eventually going to be brought down. We'll take a couple of tower hits along the way, but there's not enough damage there to punish. And Shad has to go back to farming underneath the tower. Again, this was the way that I said, like, OGC this. Disrupt the landing stage, make things difficult for them through the early goings. How did that not catch on Madara? What? That angle must have been like just barely off. That's so frustrating, I'm sure, for Toby. And the other thing about this is like Pex is just sitting there cosplaying Chen right now. We were talking about cosplay earlier. But uh, yeah, he's got the Ring of Health. So 13 HP regen naturally just on Madara right now. The only way that you get this kill now is you have to like go all the way in on this Terra Blade. it now he's got his treads coming up pretty soon freak make the move this is what i was talking about getting more pellets and walk early he wants to scout out these heroes that maybe later on when he does get that initiation them go for a big blow up play again the spear going right through madara earthwise yeah this is what i was thinking like even though they're kind of doing okay in cs the net worth is the big determining factor here. Like, even though they haven't gotten as much on this Pangolier because Zibe has been a part of a, a three kills at this point, they're doing good. And like, Clinks is catching up to where the Mars is. Star level six, in case he needs to Sunder. It's the one way that he potentially dies here. Still hanging on to that. Storm Spirit jumps in. He has Sunder available, pops it. Turns a moment. Jesse interrupting. He's going to get the Sunder off. Oh, now they got to run. They've already lost Mars. Madara looking for Boom here. Got some on the side. Pexu does a him, and apparently they're not going to go for it. But still, that's a rotation from your Storm Spirit. Z Freak going to get caught. And the Sunder with the Maledict coming out. He's going to pop. Unreal. Radiance top tower. Chessy getting the double kill now can move back mid again so that is like such a horrific exchange right there get the clinks involved in the kill he's got 15 bonus damage now from death pack and then on top of that you lose your mars and your storm spirit only person that's still like kind of well not even untouched i was gonna say the only person untouched is this he's kind of had a tough time this clinks is got a medallion <laughs> okay that's a tough one that's that's really hard and now 20 damage for the clinks oof rather rough the head of the storm again i think that the draft that you have from viking g together early this is not the point so i don't think it's quite as horrific as it would have initially seemed you've still got like the storm spirit that can kind of you've still got a luna that's going to be able to like play together with her team around this helm of the dominator um i think the big worry that i have is like if z freak really starts to become a fourth core that's where you're really going to have problems but you can see here, Arena used Hexu for fire. Aramis getting jumped on by Z Freak as they turn it back around. Shad, Eclipse, it's not going to be enough to bring him down. They can't quite kill Z Freak. And instead, it's Shad that goes down from Zibe. And I talked about like the mass physical damage, right? Yes, you can itemize around that. But the other downside is that if you build this medallion, it means it is buffing up every other part of your core group of heroes. I mean, they solved some of that mixed damage problems by taking this Chessy Tiny now because you've got, you know, Abathos for blow up potential. I, I think if you're Viking.gg now, you just need to play for the late game. You actually can't. I don't think that you can try and. Oh, God. Boom. Oh. <laughs> it's, 
spider senses were tingling. He knew something wasn't right there. That might make him think that there's a word up there. I don't know how he knew that was happening. Uh, as Rubik is just dead. How did he know? No ward here. Maybe he just... I have no idea how he knew that. What am I missing? Vision? Boom, no. Well, apparently he didn't know everything as he is down super duper low. He just freaking, oh my God, he got a rune. How did he get a rune right there? This bottle I'm pretty sure was empty at that point. Oh my God, what a freaking God by Boom. And that makes it so they can maybe defend this. Oh, there was a ward up there on the high ground, my bad. Chessy, caught, jumps away by Boom yet again, trying to live through this, but the tower is gone. This just placed, am I crazy? This looks like this was just placed, Mark. But they do find a Terra Blade gonna blow up Madara, a much needed kill for Viking.gg, because OG Seed have been completely stomping them. As Z Freak, looking like he is going to drop, they give the kill over to Celery of all people. But nonetheless, still a 4,000 gold lead for OG Seed. I don't think it's the end of the world, but that is, that, that's the type of thing that Viking.gg needed to get back into this. I'm going to stop saying .gg because my brain is just... Javelin done. Jesse's got the Mask of Madness build, which we love to see. Back towards mid Peksu. Looks like he is going to get a little bit of hurt here. Do you have the talent? No. Not yet. Hey. 12 minutes, 5 to 10. Things looking pretty good for OGC. How do you close out the rest of this sort of map? This is a good way to do it. Taking bottom tier one tower, Terrorblade can kind of just play in this area continually. Send illusions down bottom so they keep on having to come and defend the tier two. The fact that Madara is getting this tower for free without having to use Metamorphosis isn't like how bad this is going for Viking, right? Like if you're just able to sort of freely send down a tower like without having to do much of anything. Nice to die though. Tip them. Come on, Aramis. You know you want to. Us. Um, but that that's the type of thing that like it feels really bad if you're Viking. That's happened. Oh my god, Z Freaks just can dismantle him. Oh wait, maybe not. Maybe turn around. No, he gets brought down by Z in the end. And even though they lose the kill there, uh, on the other side of the map, they also lost Aramis. Tessie continuing to be a bit of a bully here. And this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, so now basically Terrorblade has free reign. The camps are all about to respawn. So he's pushing bottom while the rest of OG Radiant's are gonna send over towards mid, try and control this area. Like Terrorblade has so much free reign to be in right now. They're, they're, they're pinging it out. Luna's, yeah, they're all in there. I don't want to be there anymore. That is she gonna get outplayed though? Zibe's already here. And then Z Freak makes the rotation. This is a huge kill here on the ship. Oh, the roll, the roll away. <laughs> Turn around the eclipse. Holy crap, Shad, what a boss. Wait, ring around the rosy. They did lose Celery again, but nothing of value was lost. Shad. Damn. That was great for Viking. That was super needed. Dire structures are so Luna almost has Helm of the Dominator. It's a nice damage -ease. Out for your team. Keep together around it. Looks like they don't want to give up this tower for free. See, this is the difference. Oh, wait, though. Turn around, Shad. Oh, God. So close to death. But, oh my God, Peksu. What a God. What a God. Maledict, not gonna be enough. We're gonna turn this back around. Aramis is in some trouble. So they're gonna lose the Witch Doctor in exchange for the Rubik. But the key point is they kept this tower alive. Super important, right? Cause now it's a lot harder to come and invade this jungle area if you're Viking. Cause you could get collapsed on from this direction or from this direction or from right here, from a little outpost. And in the meantime, Shad's like, well, I don't want to go there anymore. Terrible. Went horrifically. The way that OG are playing the map, it's just like that much more efficient than them. Deed Celery moved down here. He wants to take out this. It's already been farmed up. Right now, OG Seed are getting this entire part of the map, but then also this little couple of camps right here as well. Dara. Jesse. Freak. The bounties. 
Again, down bottom also reveals Celery and Boomer there. Can they gain any type of control back over this area? These wards are like super deep, scouting everything out. They have some wards on the Radiant side, but they don't have any inside the jungle really. Or OGC side, rather I should say any in the dire jungle. This ward's okay. Bought Madara moving down here with this metal. This. You know, if you're Viking, you might think about trying to maybe go for some type of a play soon because you just saw Metamorphosis get popped, right? I think that you could make a move to take this top tower, seeing Meta was down. But if you're going to, yeah, and they're going to go do it right now. The ping comes out. They're like, Meta's been used. Go do that. Farm out the wave mid first. Let Luna farm the rest of the way as she makes her way up towards the top side here. Stack up camps along the way. Okay. D Freak's already there though. Dude, if they mount another defense here. Oh my god, Jesse Death Knight. Uh, couldn't find the deny. Unfortunate. Dead again. They have a blink off Pango. Oh, wait a minute. D Freak. Getting a little bit too big for your britches there, my dude. Prayer goes down, but so will he. And now they find Chessy also big zip in coming from the Storm Spirit. He's low on mana though. Chessy could just turn and maybe even kill him. No, okay, he's just gonna. The other bets of them were too close, but Boom is still low on mana. And the rest of OGC, I don't know if they feel comfortable walking up this hill. The giant turnaround Sive comes in with the stun. Madara shows up on this one as well. It's Hopi just trying to buy a little bit of space. Find yourself another rune, Boom. Not gonna happen. Oh man. God, that's so frustrating, I'm sure. If he just had like a little bit more man and get that secondary kill there, he feels so much better about all that, but instead losing the Mars again. But trying to farm up, get towards that Manta style. This, actually, the Frost Radiant Mage is such a clutch creep. Dude, five bonus armor, slow down the movement, uh, attack slow. It's like great against all these heroes. That's so good against Terrorblade. Good against Chessy. All these heroes. Get away from that area where danger could be. They also have another Frost Mage for Celery. I think actually one of the clutch creeps here could be the Wildwing Ripper, if he's able to find one. Really good. How much armor? I think it's two bow armor or something. There it is. Toughness or Three bonus armor. That's pretty big, right? Aramis? Pummeled, but not killed. Right. Toby. Gotta be careful. Dagger. They're all on top of this ward. He has full vision right now, finds Chessy right at the start. Can they blow him up though? They already have the Maledict down. The big roll in comes, trying to find that kill avalanche. Boom, still getting lower, but not low enough. As, well, they lose the two supports and now disarmed. They try and disengage. Shad shows up. The rest of OGC is chasing Toby here, who does still have another blink in a second and can use it to back away. Boom has to back out too. They don't want to get caught in a bad position. I mean, that just goes to show, right? Like how uncapable they are of fighting at this point. You guys really want to test. You guys are crazy. You are out of your mind. Rolling Thunder has been super clutch this game. Fear pulls them back into the Eclipse. Okay. They're not crazy. They're goddamn geniuses. And they just managed to burn down one. Oh, but Shad, look at the claims bouncing back and forth between the creeps because of the reflection. They will lose Z-Freak yet again, and round two comes in. He doesn't have full mana, but he's going to be able to bring down Zibe. Hexu trying to get out of there, but I think he's also next on the chopping block. On him, they kill him. A double kill, and suddenly, one by one, OG Seed lose four. Dyer's middle tower. I guess they kind of just didn't back out Radiant altogether tower. or they decided to stick around a little bit too long and, and Storm was able to refill his mana pool. You see right here also these Dyer's TPs and then sendbacks or rather callbacks from 
uh, celery. This allows them to stay on the map so much longer. So this is what I was talking about, right? Like all of the sudden you're now in a situation where the game has started to turn around a little bit. And the fact that this all is physical damage coming out from OG, with the exception of Tiny, who's kind of like capped off magical damage, it's a little bit problematic because all they have to do is sort of itemize around physical things. Now, like I said, this toughness aura, I mean, this might actually keep Celery alive with the toughness aura. Like, unironically, look at how good this is. The mechanism comes out. How long did it take to kill him? And now they're, well, okay, you know, it's fine. Don't worry, boom, nobody saw it. <laughs> I should just stop talking. <laughs> I thought they were gonna be able to turn that around, but they they were just like, they, all right, Celery, you got yourself into this. You get yourself out of it. It's in a finger to TP to help you. <laughs> we got this tier one tower here. <laughs> Two heroes chasing this, this Gen forever. He's like, guys, I promise I'm not dying. Just come help. Fail. Thirteen and nineteen, two thousand gold lead. Madara does feel like the be all end all carries and you saw how good that reflection was when they threw it onto Shad. It's a uh, it's a real problematic thing. Now the downside of course is that it is dispellable. So once you get this Manta style, I mean, be kind of judicious about when he uses it because reflection, particularly later in the game will kill his entire team. Like Chad will just own buddies and that's not what you want to have happen. Likewise, like that 16% evasion is pretty uh, clutch there. If Luna ends up getting a rapier. I feel like they could. But more of this coffee here. Freak staying on top of this spawn. It's an arc top. Yeah, this is what I mean, that like the constant spending out of Manta feels really good to do that, but there's there's an avenue where people could potentially uh, catch you out off guard with it. So this is that that point in time that we had always talked about of like, how do Viking win this game? And it is grouping together around these moments right here where all of a sudden this Clinks feels so much less potent than he does earlier on in running around and setting up kills to play together with Chessie, right? Like those are the moments that are really strong for the OG draft. This is like one of the moments where they're at their weakest, when it's all grouped together, push down towers, sitting around the Luna, sitting around the Chen, and then we can recall in the storm whenever we need to. The thing is Boom has to play with the full mana pool. He has to have a full mana pool at all points. Because if this fight breaks out, like and he, he can't show up with mana like this like this moment right here they're actually going to try and push this fight because they know storm can't be here with mana and because of that aramis is going to go down is a ghost scepter He's talking about that being a really good item this game for him but that that'll i mean I, part of it is because og seed showed up so you're, you're able to get viking to pull them around the map but part of it also is that they saw all right storm doesn't have mana we can push this fight Dyer's middle tower. I'd be said that so far, uh, zibe has been doing a really good job of making sure he doesn't give up rolling thunder to the Rubik. Freak realizing. Dyer's middle tower. Ward right over there. Radiant structures. Chad going for. Butterfly now. Radiance bottom tower. Butterfly BKB. He's feeling like this game is still going to be a ways out before it really gets cited. Still no Roche taken. Um, that's something that we could see. Sure. Like, I think if OG Seed win one fight at this point, if they're, or even find like a really meaningful pickoff, like Toby maybe. Oh no. Toby, Toby. Yeah, they might just go straight into Roche. Or try and find another one in there. They can like force. Oh no, Celery. Uh, are you really taking this fight? You don't have buyback on Mars. You guys are crazy. You're insane. Boom, you're dropping. You're getting boomed, my man. Get out of there. The coconut connects. They lose another one on top of that Chen. Chase boarding, finding Aramis. They will keep Boom alive and Shad just has to TP out now. Radiance top tower is I mean, I guess that the only other thing that they lost there was the Rubik. Like, 
Chen was dead no matter what, but the Storm Spirit going in there was a little bit scary. Maybe, maybe it was in hopes that they would like pop some. But I don't know. There you go. Show him who's boss centaur. You know what it did actually? That that was actually a really good play by Boom. I shouldn't I, I shouldn't have said that like that. So Boom went in there, he created a little bit more chaos, and that gave enough time for Toby to end up respawning. And now it's not a free Roche. That's actually that was a really good play. That was a really good play by all of Viking. That should help. Even though I didn't flame super hard. I thought that it was a bad play, but it was a really good play by Boom. And by Toby to not pop the the arena there mid lane right like because if he pops the arena mid then all of a sudden you feel way more confident to run in and uh take roche because you, you don't have that for another while so heads up play by viking to stop the pick off from turning into something even worse madara oh arena goes down they got him caught but the bkb turn around now he's got to get the hell out of here rolling thunder coming through aramis gets the rolling thunder stolen though okay aramis has the turnaround chance here although he just has to run i think the rest of uh like need to get out they lose mars again this guy that keeps on having to run into the middle of everybody and, and the because of it but you can see what happens that arena gets used immediately they move over towards the roche pit Radiant are scanning. They don't have Rolling Thunder themselves. And I guess they also don't have meta anymore. They don't feel confident. Celery trying to get towards the Ghost Scepter. Really is not super right now. I guess it's only 25 minutes. But just the Bloodstone doesn't feel yet. I, I'm more worried about OGC as this game goes later, though. Like, yes, I've seen Madara solo carry games for them. I'm not saying that I'm, like, terrified of this if it goes late game. Madara being, like, main damage dealer. But it, it becomes a lot harder. Right now, things feel very easy. But, like, things like this are starting to happen where you... you you want to play this OG draft with freak out front, scouting for danger. Oh, I don't know about this. This is a bold maneuver. This is a really bold maneuver. I mean, if they if they can get away, I guess the thing is they know that Meta's down. Still another 40 seconds. And Aramis instead is just gonna go rolling thunder into the middle of him. Finds the Witch Doctor, bouncing back and forth. Chessie has the BKB though. He's hiding off to the side, but Aramis, he can't get down to the low ground. Stolen Witch Doctor ultimate, turns on a Peksu. My man, just healing ward. Oh, that feels real bad. And now Zibe trying to bounce back and forth between the two of them. The Clinks lays down the ulti on top of Celery and Toby. Maledicted up are all of these heroes. It did so much damage, but it's not enough to bring them down. And now Shad trying to back out of here carefully. They do have a recall, but it looks like they're just going to try and TP out Celery again. The man left behind. And the whole time that this was going on, Madara went in. And he's going to actually have meta back up again. Oh my god, is Madara just going to kill them all? He might. He's thinking about it. This was a lot of space created. Lift up, turn around there. Zibe trying to control. Madara is saying, come fight me. Oh, and Toby, good decision to blink back to the other side. But Chessy on his tail. And now, instead of the Roche fight, they lose a Rax fight. OGC getting the split push on. And that's the thing. That fight that happens over here by the Roche pit, you feel like that's going to be into the favor of them. But the whole time, Madara was split pushing. And this, again, is all set up by that constant pressure and the OG bottom lane pushed out. Really nice stuff there. Again, that's one of those things, like Terrorblade gets the tier one tower for free. Then he can apply more pressure to the tier quicker. Normally, this thing that Trent was talking to me about, about a lot was like the, the trade-off of the tier two tower here for Roche. Instead, it's a tier two tower in Rax that gets traded. And it's not even Roche. Stuff from OG Eid and an 8,000 gold lead now. Get clapped on. <laughs> the hell bear. Colin Avalanche. Hey, bay. My Aramis. Ghost Scepter to stay alive for as long as possible. 
toss in again and they lose the Rubik and they gotta keep this bottom lane pushed out now. They're gonna buy back on Rubik, but they don't have the Mars here. Stupendous. Still, meta is available if they wanna use it. Ace, boom. Break, but get him. Nobody wants to pick up the trash of the fairy fire. Avalanche goes out. Still no BKB on this Luna. Action doing a lot of work, Manta man. <laughs> and got to back out of there again. Jesse, still a bit of a butt. They laid down the Clink Salty. And now gonna pop meta, go right on into the pit. Luna, she's so close to that BKB, but not quite there yet. And you can't take the fight. Like, uh, it's so tough. Cause you need to be able to burst Terrorblade. Otherwise it's just gonna sunder you. Jumps through, tries to seal the Aegis. Madara able to snatch it. Last hit going to Viking, but they lose the storm immediately. Toby is also gone in Celery. It's a bold strategy trying to just get out of there. But in the end, he will be brought down. And now poor old Aramis blinked on yet again. Avalanche comes through onto the Rubik. How many times has he died this game? This is going to be his ninth death. Four dead and OG seed with the Aegis. With full map control, both outposts, it's feeling like this is their time to run down lanes. Waiting for the creeps to catch back up, but currently OG seed ready to push down two lanes simultaneously. They have no glyph on the Radiant right now. They'd used it down bottom to try and stop the split coming in. And it just, it, it, it's feeling like this Luna has not really gotten off the ground. There's been a couple of good fights, a couple of good eclipses, but yeah, this BKB is super needed. Has a fairy fire now as well. There, there's a chance that you could maybe take this fight, but you need everybody. And they're not going to have the Rubik for at least 30 more seconds. Need Samantha this off, still on cooldown. Waits for it. Doesn't use it still. They just lose the full racks. Now Storm jumping onto Chessie, trying to control her. They have a clip still if they want to use it, but all of these Terrorblade illusions are going to soak up the damage as well. And OG Seed just feel like they constantly have the answers that they need. Damn. Have Chessie again. That's another thing we haven't talked about a lot, but the Pendants is actually pretty cool. Ooh, get some points up in it. Unfortunately, only the one. Oh my god, so he's like, I'm gonna right click you. And Jesse's like, okay, I'll play that game. We, we can play that game. <laughs> Runs in, finds a kill. Let's BKB done on the tiny. Zibe, roll away. A Daedalus done on Terrorblade. Ooh. And a DD rune. Oh, boom, he sees him take it. Finn, shift, get out of here, guys. You don't want to take this fight. I promise you, you don't. Meta's about to be back up. Dude, the most opportune of DDs. T toss in Madara, just toss him. Toss him, get in there. Come on, buddy, let's battle. Celery again. He's so freaking low. Toby trying to back away from this absolute monstrosity of a hero. Look at him go in there. The arena is dropped down, but he is all oh, barely able to walk away. Fucking those projectiles. That's pretty hype. All right, boom, control and Chessie. They're just tickling them. They do no damage at all. In the meantime, freaking Madara is hitting for like 700 a punch. Look at this absolute monster. Look at this thing. How is this fair? Too big. Storm zipping through, but Peksu is there for the heals afterwards. He is fine and dandy. While on the back lines, they are just taking down racks. This is going to be mega creeps. Unless something magical happens, but Sunder is available in just a second. Glimmer Cape lift. They're trying to stop the Sunder. Can they do it? No. Dara going to live through it. Maybe one more zip now. That's the only thing I can think of, but he still has the Aegis afterwards anyways. No matter how you slice it, it looks really bad for Viking. Dad turned around upon. Can't Sunder yet. Can't Sunder. No target. They bring him down. That's Aegis number one. Dad's still trying to beat into him here. He needs more damage. Queuing up that Rapier. We knew it was going to come to this eventually, but with the Storm dead, I don't even know if the Rapier would be enough. They turn, they punch the spear to try and buy a little bit more space. Poor old Shad. They toss him out of the arena onto the other side. Madara finds the kill, no buyback. And GG is finally going to be called from the Viking squad.
My goodness. OGC came to play. Game number one done. Impressive. Well, uh, 18 to 38 was a hell of a score. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. under attack.
Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Middle Tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Middle Tower is under Radiant attack. Are scared. <laughs> Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. 
Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Dire team back. Radiant team back. Dire team bag. Radiant team bag. Dire team bag. Radiant team bag. Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Dire team pick. Dire team pick. Beastmaster. Radiant team pick. Enchantress. Radiant team back. Points away. Team back. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again. We're here for game number two. Sorry for the slight delay in getting all these things. I just want to make sure that uh, it was all correct and everything up to uh, above board before we got started so that way you guys wouldn't miss the action. Uh, and we just... Twitch delay that got caught up. Things are crazy when you try and broadcast through a bunch of different crazy stuff. Don't worry about it. Regardless, just seconds. know Remain. that everything is fine. Um, wish that we lived Five in a world where you didn't Remain. have to put on crazy delays because people would try and cheat or something like that. But we do live in a world where that's happened in the past and we're not going to let it happen again in the future. There you go. That's my rousing. <laughs> uh, so Viking.gg going to face off against O. Game number one felt fairly back and forth and like there were moments where Viking were gonna be able to take uh, Then afterwards, OG did some really solid like split pushing plays, um, recognizing fights. Again, I think back to that moment down near the bottom tier tower on Dire side where all of Viking were except for and they were ready to recall him into the fight. And then they were like pushing all of OG Seed shows up as they back out. Storm doesn't have enough to fight and partially because they might not have wanted to fight at that point. Um, find a couple of pickoffs out of there. 
So there's like all these little moments, you know, things are like, well, that could look good or this could look good. And uh, I think there's also something to be said for the fact that like one come out feels a lot worse a a Mars. Like everything starts to sort of fall apart there. Yes, you can like Airblade, you'll throw out your right clicks and they're going to be blocked out by the arena, but it's not the same danger that just make sure that this lobby didn't get they're just taking a really long time with this next pick i think they're thinking do we need to ban out the shaker right now um that's what i would be thinking if i'm if i'm because not hate a shaker right here chantra shaker mm. morph shaker mm. double mm. they're gonna take the sapphire all right you don't even have to take shaker here if you don't they get like nyx this is a sick nyx game it's actually such a good Knicks game. Holy crap. I would love a Knicks here. Maybe it's just one of those situations where it's like, right? 10 seconds remaining. B. Pick here is just go Earthshaker. Five seconds remaining. The like big brain five head play is Knicks. And then the like duper duper what I'm doing play is something. Else. Yeah, this is it. That's. What did you see? I guess the, the reality is that like they can go either, right? They don't that either one of those is a really good answer. They can just take their other hero puck. It's pretty hype. That's pretty hype. Cause so here's the thing, right? Like now Viking has two choices. And either um so they're gonna go the To me that still I like the idea of Baker for OG bot. Nyx. K against PL. Nyx. Map fire. Pretty solid against Pango. There's some parts of it that suck, but whatever. It's fine. Um, And they don't have to go remaining. those. This still could be a Z Freak puck, too. Five if they wanted to. Remaining. Run something else. That's one of the strengths of having a player like Z Freak, who just has such a diverse heroes that he can play with back just upon like player hero combat kind of like the idea. in terms of this game i like the idea of a shaker more freak and then or you could even do like z freak enchant hexu shaker which is a little funky but but if, if you do at this point shaker with more um have such an I mean that you four PL comes on right like our flame one item plus ags and then what what do you have to lock him down what do you have to train five seconds remaining I don't think it's much and all you really need is have like that up time talent cooldown reduction is nice it. We have seen Radiant some Morph Shakers team. lose. It's not as terrifying of a combo. They think that it's going to freak puck. Dire team pick. Just real quickly, somebody was asking in chat who was thought to be cheating. Nobody was thought to be cheating. I just want to make that clear. There was never any point where anybody thought that was happening. I was saying that having to put the delay on stream can sometimes cause some issues. And that's done to ensure that everything is a but there was no indication that anybody was cheap <laughs> 10 seconds remaining hero taken void choose your hero i'm gonna go the void spirit so this still could be z freak or or chessy yeah they're gonna do chessy and then Fuck. that makes sense this is like this was the classic So this is still a strong timing to me it feels like a greedier draft from og i would have liked i like to play fast with beastmaster and i think that this draft can play fast from og uh, but it's fine see how it goes Delray jakiro got aramis on snapfire 
Toby Pango. Remaining. I love it. Viking.gg. I'm remaining. there. There's something like very, very nice about like just correct grammatically typing. You know what I mean? I'm don't care with no apostrophe. <laughs> Lower key. Pickles. All right. So how does this look? Does it go? That fire to me is not that like absolute monstrosity that we passed, but there's some cool we got set up here, right? We've got like ice path from fog. The the idea of like tango roll corner's kiss really deadly around a fight that they're gonna probably have at some point. As far as the lanes themselves go though. El Jakiro deal with a Beastmaster Puck. I want to see if Z Freak starts with boot. That's going to tell me a lot about how they see this. Hold on. Game number versus Viking. Start with the pause, as is. Now Puck's gonna start starting with the uh, the Sage's Mask. I've seen so Necro book. I think that it's uh it's quite we might just go air vessel game. I could, I could actually, if the game is going really well, I could see Z Freak trying to build a meat hammer. <laughs> I could totally see him trying to do that. Such Wait and see. Just Where are you at, Aramis? Where are you at? I believe in you. Prepare for it. Number one, I really thought they were going to be able to pull it back better. Not happen at all. Or does that your look like right? it's, it's kind of like the old racing sticks or whatever, but the direction does it look like a pair of glasses if each. Why does it have three? Because those are supposed to be like looking glass things, right? Are you like looking closer? What else? What else? What other purpose would these serve? Why would you look in from this angle? It's like it's also the steering wheels right in front of it. Is it a camera? Is that what's going on here? These are like putting on her own live stream. She's like, look at me, I'm killing people. Ha ha ha. Thanks. All right, we're back. About the snapfire later. Now just imagine in your head live streaming stuff that's happening right now. the most terrifying hero to laugh their own you throughout a dota 2 game i feel like if you had something like an ember spirit you would just like immediately make everybody throw up that watches it <laughs> like sleight of fist he's like zoop, 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 zoop. all right enough of the pontification about the completely necessary ideas we got a ward place back behind the tower Bit of an invasion here. I don't know if Shad saw that from Z. Please, gonna. Oh, well, now they don't. Away. <laughs> Love that. Was Jesse the one that placed it? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Great. Dad. Battle begins. Be a little bit wary. Dead for you. 
one bounty run. They're gonna leave that for. Is there any way that Madara wants to? Chessie is going day flight. Your anger is useless. It's just Madara. not fair. Come for you. So they don't want to play into this line. They're feeling like. Well, I mean, obviously, they always want to give Madara an amazing. That's like the priority. Of but what's interesting, they're opting to send Chessy safe pressure here in the snap fire. This lane is terrifying. Aramis, what's happening, mommy? I believe in you. Oh, it against. And probably Peksu runs up top as well. He's already got the Blight Stone. Try and just pressure back, snap fire whenever. But this is going to be kind of an annoying lane, actually. I, I honestly, I feel like you might even want. This is going to be a tough lane. Um, Peksu alone is not going to be able to, right? Because snap fire is just going to scatter black. Bosh buckle. He has like no HP. 540 damage is this? Another 50%, so 140 heals a well. Nothing on it though. What is that? What's that X right there? There's no. turned off right now he's disconnected so because of that the speed gauges are turned off that makes sense <laughs> have you have you ever driven a car that looks like this what are you talking about I also sense. it's not a car and how does the pedals work what is the pedal connected to here what's she doing with this like a spike that she just pushes in that's not very nice like granny style Fire's not a masochist. <laughs> Dreamer has never seen a vehicle with a. What gauge have you seen that points towards your elbow? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, out of your mind. Now, see the 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 steering wheel kind of makes sense. Like I can imagine that like move side to side or something. Also, they're not pointed straight. Like off that way. As definitely isn't a Alright, where are you at, Aramis? My my ability to fill has almost completely Can I tell you guys though one time? I broke down the entire laning it was like to play Lena We were paused for five minutes, at the start of a game. And for some reason, admins had nothing to say the entire time. So I just talked about it over. I was like breaking down the intricacy. Okay, then when you trade the right clicks here, and then you but uh, like a light strike array there, if you're able to slight dodge this array, and I just like pushed my glasses up. Nose. It's very frustrating. Oh, thank goodness. Aramis, please never leave me again. I just want you to be here forever. Let's see if the gauges come back online. Nope. Still, they're, they're not getting out any information. No gauges here. We'll get them next time. The game started. Let's do this. Madara going to be forward back a little bit. There. Ooh. Nice. Oh, three last hits, one of But we'll keep our eyes on the way that this lane starts to work out. I mean, imagine if this was a morph lane, how difficult. Cassie is down to like super low HP early on here. Meanwhile, Celery trying to push back Z Freak. Freak has the orb, but 
Now, all of these lanes are actually going to be kind of tough. The regen war, I think, gets won by Viking in all three of them. Although you have a lot of regen here. Double salve, tangos, just tangos. But they're probably bringing out some more right here. Salvin. Up top, double salve. Jesse has two more tangos left. One salve on Enchantress, and they bought, brought out both of their couriers already. This could be tough for them. Aramis, though, just as I say that, say DC, dude, gets dropped down. Finds the kill. Toby gets the last hit over there in the creep, though. Find a little bit of solo XP. Fair. Dibe. Time. I mean, I guess that's the thing, right? Is that if you're going to win the regen trade, the, the goal is then, okay, let's just kill this person, right? And that's probably the best way to do it. If they can kill Toby again, this is big. But no, the turnaround comes on a Peksu. So Peksu is going to die for the cost of Toby as Aramis gets some extra right clicks onto Chessy. Careful about the Dark Troll Summoner, though. Keep on giving you the punches. Celery just salves up afterward. Dibbe starting with axes. This is a build that we've seen become more and more popular as time has gone on. Zibbe just lose courier there. Um, I usually see it with Bassy getting picked up by somebody. His Void Spirit is dead again. Wow. Okay. That's actually the first time. Excuse me. You got two other part of two other kills. Madara is able to boom. Tower shots onto him. That fire fire down bottom. Nothing doing. Thought maybe there was a little bit of an engagement. Freak pops clarity. It's a uh... Dara in the meantime. Power. Sure. Dude, uh, he needed three hits. He's up so high on strength right now. The ember went on him. One sleight of fist. That's all I ask. Just one sleight of fist. Oh my god. <laughs> Dara's coming back in again. You know he would have loved to do it. Be able to get a free rune. Wow. Illusion rune picked up for the ember. That is frustrating, I'm sure. Dara, I mean, it would have been worse up top, but it doesn't feel amazing lately. He's gotten some denies, which have been, but there's a good amount of pressure being put on him. Peksu, throw out the turn around. Stomp comes from the centaur. Cookie forward. Toby gets the kill. Nice timing there from Viking. Managed to bring down the Enchantress and Aramis trying to run away. Scatter blasts. Moves down the eighth remnant, but not able to get the kill. The resonant pulse, though, will finish that fire in the end. Tuntar will expire. Out. All right. Like Z Freak is going to go and contest for bounties. Celery. Breath off. Quick fingers coming from the puck. That is a for one. Do again. We get close for the bonus damage from Scatter Blast. Sooner or later, gonna cut that you down. kill. Very well played. The big winner so far across all these lanes is Chad. 29. It's currently top net worth, but also denying out a good amount of experience here. You can see that Madara still had okay laning. 21 and 11. A lot of denies there. It hasn't really come to the tune of like severely hampering the Earth Spirit's game by any stretch for an XP, but it's not like any horrific. While Zibe, he's kind of been forced to jungle. I'm sure Z Freak is pretty happy about. Freak, Madara coming testing for the Strun. Picked up. Immediately drops the sentry. Got a remnant? Yeah, he has one up. To... 
Yeah, six minutes, couple of kills across the board. Well, that bottom Chessy is going to go on to Aramis. And they managed to hit again. Too far forward, it looks like. Well, Boom is pressuring Madara. There's a battle going on down bottom. Celery going to drop z freak barely able to live through the liquid fire and that's going to keep him alive while back mid dara was yet again able to fend off that emperor spirit but the big thing here is that he keeps forcing madara to go super high into the which makes his last scene potential that much weaker during that period of time when he's down there pressures again kind of having to play this one right on the fence makes his like last chain under tower like really difficult this is a really cool way to be annoying on boom right because like now look he's missing these last hits just by boom pressuring forward like this he just missed three last hits because of like that's the type of play that you need to make on boom it's not a kill but it's it's really important as chessy going on to toby diving un roll forward Bounce back to the other direction. Chessy tries to ask for step away. Almost kills him off. Oh my God, Toby. Get out of there, dude. That was close. Creek. Happen, although creep show up, but Chad there on the Z Freak trying to throw the jaunt out and away. Cookie, scatter blast. Really only level. Just Let's take a look at the net worth now. Chessy, the main one that's having a good game right now on it feels like. Slowdown comes, and they will be able to get the rotation for the kill. Making it happen on the Antris. Chessy picking up the assist there. Shovel gotten for boom. It's not how much he liked to use those early, but he got the better item here in the Uh, back up. Rather, tell me to back up. Shows up. We're getting close to the 10 minute mark. Currently, each holds an outpost. There isn't really a disparity between that there are four net worths right now. The difference between highest core and the lowest core, thousand volt. Still feeling very, very edge this game. Imagine that we're probably going to start to see the breakdown of the laning stage pretty soon here. Translate us into Madara, you can see. Realizing, okay, this is very Radiant's the morbid mask, and that's going to allow me to see low so his his farm is going to start to pick up on that morphling very shortly Ooh, this is nice though he can kind of hold this for the moment so he wants to hold the ice path for as long as possible as the roll comes out from toby oh good play though with the silence that interrupts it they can't get both outposts while down chessy finding that kill can they get him in time boom making it happen this flame guard is going to blow up aramis and now the flame guard lasts longer for madara a double kill Dude, that Radiant ulti usage, top killed. tier. Not to mention, I think Radiant's they got both outposts. Is under attack. Yeah, the outposts both gained for OG. Radiant's bottom tower I like how this one feels. Good stuff. Take that death on Chessy for that every day of the week. Well, in the meantime, this constant style of Dota that we keep on seeing out of OG Seed and a lot of other top tier. Pressure down the bottom lane. Try and take that tier as Toby is going to be brought down, down towards the mid. This opens up just the entire world for Madara to farm, right? Like the 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 Beastmaster's playing around this area, and the whole time they can also just sort of push up here. He can go back. Sibe goes down. This is not the end of the world. But Aramis actually is going to die first. Did they able to get something summon one more boar to be given over to boom although trying to kill off celery almost enough doesn't quite have it though boom is gonna get a nice influx of gold there 
because all of that action happens, because he roars, because he kills one, brings another down somewhat low, the rest of OG Seed rotate over and able to make something happen on the Kind of forced to run away. Z Freak is there. He doesn't have foil anymore. So they're not going to opt for the full on commitment, but it does look like with this, they'll bring the tower really low and within deny range. And in fact, it might just go down. It will. They didn't even get the deny. OGC just got three tier one towers in the space of like a couple of minutes. This like instant turn on where you just like suddenly are keeping pressure all across the map. This is the type of Dota that we're supposed to play. It's not quite as clean as some of the other squads in like the <laughs> that, but by and large, they're making all the right moves. Two thousand gold lead. So this is the next question. How do you how do you close out the next part of this game? Um, if you're OGC, you I'm actually taking this outpost. Yeah, this is this, what you'll find laying this is the goal though. It, it it speaks to what they want to accomplish now, right? The fact that they're running up there and taking that outpost, they want to own this side of the map if possible, and be able to keep Viking.gg potentially pinned down there. Eventually, take down that tier two tower. That's the goal. And if they can do that, then all of a sudden you're in a position where you can sort of keep that pressure on here and threaten that with all. Doesn't take too much. Things is Jesse running in, salary to keep him out of the trouble. Jesse's not. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Simulate. Yeah, that's that's a hard one. This is looking a dodge there, but. Break coil. Jesse jumps in onto him. Boom. Trying to run away. The disarm is there. Aramis has a cookie. Cookie boom. Chase, chase. Still not finding it. Silence on the two. Toby still chasing. Try and take down Chesse. They're going to be able to find that kill one time. Now, can they get a second? Madara, he switched over into the Ember Spirit. Trying to chase down one. Will be able to find the kill onto Toby. So one for one exchange so far. But Aramis, I think, is likely to go down if they can catch up to him. Celery is definitely dead, but Aramis actually will be able to survive. Boom. Wave forces them out. Take the fight in the mid lane. Now, you need to try and just own the map. Chad, in the meantime, says, all right, well, you guys can be over there. I'm going to go farm my jungle. who keeps on wanting to come over and take this they're looking for the to have the ice path down Pexu dodges away the side of it chad chase got him under their sights burning them down Pexu gonna die they also get the courier so viking G come up with some good answers here ogc try and pull them around the map Top lane, Madara's gonna keep, keep push going. Don't give me bottom, fine, I'll take top. Viking get this one. They need to start getting some of these objectives because they have yet to take a tier one tower. And Z Freak moving in with the coil available. They're also bringing in the morph lane. Doesn't quite manage to find Shad there. They will blow up the Jakiro. Meanwhile, Aramis trying to turn this back around, rooted for the moment, almost able to get the kill on Z Freak, but not quite in time. Boom. Find the kill onto the puck, still trying to control. Toby jumps in on all of them. Have OGC bit off more than they can chew? A good jump away there. Astral step to dodge the rolling thunder, but still back and forth. Toby rolls, trying to kill off Madara. The flame guard, it's keeping them alive. They don't have a way to burn through it. Chessie trying to run from Shad. This PL is starting to turn into a bit of a raid boss and able to dodge away from that Aether Remnant. Madara still turned upon as well. He's low on mana. Doesn't have a way out of this one easily. If Shad can actually do this himself, such a big win there for Viking. With just Diffusal Blade, PL just starts to dominate in these fights. And I don't know if they just didn't get enough damage onto him to clear through the illusions or if it was Shad just playing really, really well around the area, but whatever the case was, made it look pretty. In the end, they didn't manage to get the tier one tower still, which 
oh, I think it's gotta be yeah. frustrating for Viking. They just don't have heroes that take it that quickly. Maybe it's not the end of the world, maybe it doesn't matter too much, but this to me does feel like type of situation where black Dyer's top OGC get to 17 minute mark probably gonna look for that next round of items and just uh miss the ice pack but still find the stun secondary stun jesse has a spear vessel on him chase forward looking for more boom shows up Kadara turns this oh in some trouble taunted another round of sleight of fist trying to dodge remnants away just barely but they have been a shot it followed him hexu able to get the kill onto that ember little bit too big for his britches there little bit too big nice pickup for shad love to see that item on pl so good Dyer's middle tower is under attack 30 kills so far in just 17 minutes very action-packed battle back and forth type of dota that we're seeing here next you're gonna get the d ward and when zibe gets this level 15 talent that's to me when this game starts to feel way harder for viking because you basically double your vision around the map hot cool down brings the number of hot map so what 60 second duration and then it's 16 second down to cast it out it's a lot of hawks but it might not matter if peel gets big enough like I, I think that he can win them this game like obviously not alone but the, when boom starts to get more items this time go straight for a bkb a little surprised by that one but i think that he's recognizing hey you know what if we if we take this fight right now they can potentially bad engagement for us Peksu, smoke is gonna break backing away they already killed that one hawk that was heading over the direction that was a really good play by aramis Scout out that movement. Slide of fist. Three. Throws out the orb, but they will find and kill Hero. Wow, they dropped the Snapfire ultimate, but Chessy showing up afterwards. Pexu's here as well. Aramis has to get out of here. They roar the ember. Low on mana, gonna die. I don't know why they tried to take that fight. Snapfire ulti there. Uh, well, whatever the case was, OGC take full advantage of it. Engagement hard. They find Toby. Some more trouble. Yule Scepter lifts up, and the Aether Remnant pulls him down to the grave. Another kill. And more importantly now, the Tier 2 Tower mid. They're playing so much faster right now. 20-minute mark coming up. Looks like both outposts likely to go although maybe not here Eel's trying to go here and Jesse is going to be forced to get some type of a reaction out Scepter and they've got two of them that are going to be focused on getting it and they'll be able to just barely the outpost one apiece much needed for Viking they need that XP and flux difference pretty heavily starting to go into the favor of OG feed gold similar story we're getting towards that 4k mark Bounty. Madara is becoming more and more of a monster Radiant ancients scanning. more neutral items though it's like both teams have them so seven minutes the next time that we're gonna big discrepancy and the biggest thing is Jakiro got a philosopher's stone that's pretty hype for him Ember got the uh, uh, Ether Shawl. Items on, well, Essence Ring is pretty big. Essence Ring is not. It's relatively even. I, I think that this, the Philosopher's Stone's pretty important for Celery. Particularly the way that he's been playing, like to get him that just sort of natural influx of gold is super. Bad way. 
thousand gold lead. What does he go for though? I wouldn't mind him seeing to try and save up for like a bigger item. But but play this game at this point. Start to feel a little bit better for Viking. He's in. Getting caught. Toby. Chase. They blow up one. Is another kill on the Pex. No! My god, Z Freak! Dude, the coil! Oh, the coil! Unreal! So they lost Snapfire and they couldn't even kill the Enchantress. Did they commit roll for that? No, they. Okay. Oh wow. That is nuts. All right. Well, Helm of the Dominator and Necrobook level three. Zibe, after controlling and taking down the mid tier one tower, like there's constant threats across the map. There's like very few places that you feel safe playing it. I mean, you can see like how much they've sort of been stuck in this area. There's never been any real movement out across the map to try and invade the jungle at all. That Madara is basically free to do whatever he wants. It. This is like the freest Morphling game ever. Sort of farming away, shows up to fights when he wants to. In the meantime, Jesse is literally just running at them over and over again. This is this is not a recipe for success if you're Viking. Um, that's the danger of, of the map control. It's the danger of just sort of not having any way to play out there. Careful, Aramis got purged. They got the stomp afterwards. Axes go out. Roar is going to be used. And you can't even move out to try and farm a creep wave. The game is just that hard. This, this net worth lead is just going to continue to explode out. In the meantime, OG moving in to take down Roche. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. They should know that this is going on, though. He's gonna move over and try and make a contest. This could actually work out for them somewhat. Now, roll through. Madara showing up. Gonna get bounce back and forth in the middle of the macro pyre in the death zone, fully under control, but it's not mattering. They're focusing on the rest of these other heroes. Down Chessie. Assimilate off to the side, disarmed, chased, and killed. Now looking for more. Can they find any extra follow-up? Controlling, boom, but he's not doing any damage to him. They brought down the Morphling so low, he's on such high strength that they don't have any damage to throw into this fight. They're gonna lose three. Damn. Dara now back up to full HP after being brought down super low, but they can move into this and take the pit themselves. This is huge for Viking. That fight by all accounts should have gone much better into the favor of OG, but a great freaking rolling thunder. Pango near the pit is just a death snare. And it looks like with no attempt to contest, Chad gonna pick up the Aegis. The defeat Manta, this is feeling like it's one of those PL games where things start to go your way, you take down a couple of towers, with that influx of gold for your supports in particular. All of a sudden, things could start to turn around. Jesse is getting towards that Aghanim Scepter, which is a very strong item indeed. As he jumps forward, tries to get the courier, but it's just gonna get pummeled. Jesse, was it worth it? My man, what's happening? Now Toby, with the longest initiation in the freaking world, is gonna try and find the Enchantress, but can't quite get there. And now look at how much like how far out on the map they're playing. Those couple of kills and an ill-advised Roche by OG end up paying huge dividends for Viking. I didn't want to will eventually as he ancient. And now next on the docket, go for the tier one tower. Toby calling for the charge. Dara really wants to blow up Toby. Couple more hits, <laughs> quick and easy kill. I was like, I don't even need to get these creeps. I'm out of here, guys. He could have popped Manta first, maybe. I think that that would have been cool. It's the safer play just to TP out in case he does need to fight and have the Manta afterwards. But he's he's realizing, okay, I just gotta play it safe, take my time, get into my items. 
I don't think that there's a game where Madara doesn't feel good going late game. Even if he's playing against something like a PL Ember. This guy loves playing late game. Great at making decisions. Thousand gold lead right now. OG seed after things were starting to look really good for them. Back a little bit. Let's let's say 50-50. Right on the edge. Way. Go back towards mid. Are Viking gonna make a move for themselves now? Be a pretty good moment for them. They smoke up. Have any other item that's coming up soon? I guess just the basher on PL is nice. Don't have the best vision out. Now they're going to be walking right underneath a ward. Shad is. Time to find Peksu here. So Viking trying to get up some good vision around the map. They're also trying to take over this area so they can get ancients, which give you that higher percentage next tier of items. Seven minutes, they're just getting it right now. Was Yell getting a Paladin sword, uh, or excuse me, a Paladin sword is the other team. So telescope and quickening charm. Farming. Jesse has enough now for that Aghanim Scepter. There's a Paladin Sword for Morph. Really nice. Those of you guys that don't know, cast a fusal a little bit. Instead of just... Take the slip. That is, that is really good. I wonder if Morph would rather have that than the Paladin Sword. But you look like Chessy, he's just saying, okay, you guys take a fight, you win it. I'm going to cut creep waves now. Look at this. All three heroes in positions to cut creep waves. Adara's going to TP back now, but they don't want to fight, obviously, into the Aegis. Chad eventually takes down the tier two tower. So that was two tier ones and a tier two, all claimed because they have this Aegis for another, what is that, 50 seconds roughly. I'm anticipating that OG probably try and smoke up in the next little bit here. See if they can catch the Aegis right as it's wearing off. Oh, Celery gets caught by the Purge. Roar comes afterwards. And they should just let this Jakiro go. Wait, what? He's buying back? All right, Chad's like, okay, you guys want to fight? Let's go. Abyssal Blade comes out. He just had it delivered. Looking for this puck. And Jesse also in a little bit of trouble. Toby going to chase forward with this one. Rolling Thunder back and forth. Boom chasing, trying to find the angle. Gets the root on both of them. And Toby able to get the stun. And now the back and forth. The combo comes out. Able to control. Gets the stun on to Jesse. Can he get out of here at the last second to simulate? Trying to live. Void Spirit's a dumb hero, but not that. Well, that... Dara was able to get the kill on a Snapfire in the meantime, but that was a huge win. And now no Void Spirit for 45 seconds, even though this Aegis is expiring. I want to see how much they can get done here. Toby pushes out bottom side as well. Creeps go up high ground, but it looks like they don't want to tempt fate any further. This entire time Madara has been farming. He's keeping up with this PL beautifully. But you can see Sprinkles getting exposed in this game plan from OG Seed at the moment. Again, all to the tone of trying to get more farm for Madara, who blows up Celery. Frustrating. I mean, he, he is the raid boss, right? He all end all as far as cores right now, and no blink yet for Z-Freak, but he does have an Aghanim Scepter, because why not? What the hell? Item yet on Jakiro? He's trying to get towards the Glimmer Cape. He actually has the, uh, yeah, put this in your back. There you go. Little pro tip out there for all you guys. If you're dead, put the Philosopher Stone in your backpack. You still get the GPM. I, think I saw that courtesy of God's Twitter when the item was first coming out. Credit with credit. Bell Amp for the Puck. Free at level wise. I level Matara. <laughs> He's four levels ahead of the next highest. Man has just been AFK farm mode since the laning stage and making it work. Jesse 
Yep, their overextension potentially disarmed. Tries to run away. Plus side is they didn't have to commit anything there and they bring him down to like no HP, but Hexu's there to heal him back up afterwards. Tenants. After claiming a couple of towers by virtue of that Aegis, we're waiting for the next Roche spawn to probably signal the next set of fights. They're gonna change a lot. Up, that might have been scouted under this ward. Not sure if they quite caught sight of it. Based upon the movement now from OG, it feels like they know that something could be happening, and Zibe is running for the hills. Although they are gonna connect with this smoke underneath this courier, so they realize that OG here, and they send the courier. Yeah, okay, they know. Radiance top tower. Affirmative. Hex is like, all right, you guys are right. You got me. Obi. Quick sight, but can't get out in time. Can get out in time, right? Really heads up play here from OG need to dodge that smoke. I don't know if it was caught underneath the ward, but they at the very least were able to it was happening. Sentry ward. A lot of D wards going on. Trying to just control the vision off the map. Bottom tower is under attack. Done for the Beastmaster. Okay. Managed to finish off Guardian Greaves for the uh map fire as well. So a lot of defensive items for Viking. They kind of in this spot now where I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the damage potential that you've got on Viking. Like Ember, obviously Spirit Vessel amazing, but then going B afterwards, I kind of wonder if he has like enough damage to really deal with the guys. They're not like the, the, the strongest targets in the world, like tanky beefy boys ever. They, they have a lot of maneuver. I'm worried that they're not going to be able to burst them in the duration of the fight. Heal going satanic sounds fine to me, though. Buyback status also. Eye on this for this next fight. Radiant only have it on the Ember. Will Dyer have it on everybody but the Beast? Roche. It's a relatively short spawn. So from now it'll be back up. You're gonna realize, okay, scan is gonna turn green. They aren't in there. Roche is not. This is what we've sort of come to expect from Pro Dota at this point, right? That DD is nice. They don't see that yet on OG. Second though, when he shows. Them. But this, this is kind of what we see a lot of, is sort of this posturing around these high grounds. If you're Radiant, you don't want to go up on this high ground. If you're Dire, you don't want to leave Barry. And so what's going to happen instead is Viking are going to move up and they're going to take this outpost. And now they sort of, if if you do ever leave this area for OG Seed, they not only hold this area, but now they're also going to be able to hold this other area. So the only play that you have now for OG Seed is to try and cut these other waves if you can put the pressure on. So I think if you're, you you need to go get this wave right now if you're Celery. It's super important that he does. Yeah, because otherwise they can just go high ground. Even as it is, they might be able But they see them le leaving, taking the other outpost. Close to that 35 minute mark, Z Freak. Careful about not overextending. Be able to retreat. Back up. There's already a Hawk there for another 30 seconds. Got to be somewhat frustrated about that, but it's probably not the end of the world. This PL is going to pick up his full satanic. So the reason that you take this fight with this shrine right nearby is because then you're able to buy back and TP fight. But the only problem is that the person with buyback right now is Ember. You're really close to having buyback on the Snapfire, on Kobe. Jesse, though, in some trouble. Triple Remnant 4 just gets completely demolished. And on the other side, they found Madara. Chad trying to live through this one. Do they have enough control? The roll coming back through. Zibe also going to find the roar now onto the PL, but he has Satanic. Can he get it off and live through this one? Trying to turn. He's silenced. He's disarmed. Cookie trying to keep him alive. The turnaround is there, and the heal comes back through. It is enough to keep him alive for just the moment. Chad running away. Pexu wants to desperately kill him, but it's not enough. OG have already lost Jesse. Now they're going to lose Pexu, and if they're not careful, Madara might be next. 
out of mana, out of time, trying to run away. He's got a spear vessel on him. Also, Madara gets caught by the abyssal, controlled, and eventually killed. They did not have enough to take down that PL. They get punished. OGC now in a really, really difficult situation. They're going to lose the Aegis and Cheese for round two. This is with a PL that is gaining strength. They've got heroes that their support starting to get some defensive oriented items. Game is hard. Game is real hard for OG Seed now. Madara dead for 60 seconds with no buyback. I mean, yes, you have this puck that's pretty farmed by Z Freak. Is he gonna go for the play? Dude, this guy's insane. Oh my god. Oh no. He really wanted it, but he's gonna be controlled and killed off. You gotta go for that play. Didn't end up working out. Cheese is gonna be given to Toby. Aegis on Shad, and if things continue this fashion, we might be seeing ourselves going to a game number three. Potentially. I wouldn't have it any other way. The last game that these two played 24 days ago was also a best of three that went the full distance. That time, it was Viking that won game number one and then OG next two. We'll have to see if history repeats itself or if maybe OG can just close this one out right here. It'd be easy. Jesse? Can't afford to get caught out by that Abyssal Blade. Buyback status again. He does not have it. 700 gold away. Morkling is TPing in. This is deadly. I understand not wanting to go in, but Celery, look at the Glimmer Cape. It saves him. The silence is out. Immediately, they have the Guardian Greaves afterwards, keeping him alive. Shad trying to show up, trying to turn. Gets the Abyssal Blade onto the Morphling, controlling him for the moment. They have Roar again if they want to use it, but they need to find the real PL. Can they get it? Shad turns onto the puck, finds the kill, and in spite of the coil, they can't keep these Viking heroes off of the rest of OG. They don't have a Rolling Thunder anymore, though, so Viking have to be a little bit wary. Still not even level 25 PL yet, if we're going to be honest about it. This has the potential to get worse. Zibe sees the real PL, but do they have the damage to deal with it? Morph needs more mana. He's got to get back there. Eating Mango's on the way. Honestly, like, if they want to take the fight, they got to go right now. Chad Doppelgangers, they're going to see which one's the real one again. They have a Blink Deck Roar, but again, changing the... PL is just it, trying to initiate on the PL rather is so frustrating. And you saw there, like that that to me shows again for Celery being able to get into this Glimmer Cape. That's the difference between life and death. Because if Madara initiates on him and he doesn't have that Glimmer Cape, that's a kill 100% of the time. Paladin Sword is such a good... Top tower. Suddenly, after 26 to 26 is the score, we're back to even. A pretty high win probability going into the favor of Viking GG. Zibe doing Beastmaster things. He really would love to be able to get into that AC. I mean, it, this is the thing that's so crazy about the like satanic with the paladin sword is that even when you're not using the satanic active, like just the satanic itself is like almost enough regen. Shad alive. We have the hawk to scout the back lines, but this is about to be 25 PL. You can see like the rest of them, they're running out of experience range just to give it to him and he gets it. And now they're gonna run back in and get close. Like all these little things to try and make sure that they get that. So 25 that was there. He's got the doppelganger. If he wants to use it. No, critical strike. It's a critical strike. Holy crap, he destroyed them. But on the back lines, they've already lost Toby. Boom, getting brought down super low by Madara. And they're gonna lose celery as well while they try to run away with boom. Base forward coming, round two of this one. Shad, he's killing these heroes rather rapidly, but Peksu, while well, the rest of his team is dying. Help buddies, Aramis. Trying to run away, they can't quite get him there with the Aether Remnant, but the turn forward, the right clicks are there. Another round of Adaptive Strike should be able to finish it off after the Yule Scepter lift up, though. It doesn't happen. He is eventually dead with the Silence. 
out trying to turn and get away. Madara turns on the Celery, blows him up again. That's two dead with no buyback for Radiant. Oh, good E-Blade coming from the Mort to try and keep Zibe alive. Madara, Doppelgangers, runs away, still trying to survive this one. But they got their eyes on the prize. They find the tasty target of Madara and gobble him up. Does have buyback after killing off the rest of these heroes. But using it at this point, it feels bad as well. You might need to, though. Like, I don't think you can... They're... I guess that they still have the tier 2 bottom. But they might just go for the drone, honestly. Yeah, they buy back on Madara. They have to. Chase forward, trying to kill off the Ember. Madara runs through, able to find the finish, gets that kill. Now Shad turned upon. Still got a Satanic active. He's got a freaking Scotty, too. This guy is terrifying. He decided to pop it. He's still holding it on to the Aegis afterwards as well, willing to let himself die once. Now, Zibe does not have a roar anymore. They're creating a lot of Madara illusions. Taunt comes out, able to control Shad, pulling him down. Chase continues. Right clicks are there. Is my man going to live? Satanic, not enough. He's dead. No buyback. They don't have any buybacks. What? Aramis now also in trouble. They have a creep wave. Pex is like, we got to keep this creep wave pushing. They kill them all off. No PL for 80 seconds. Dyer's bottom tower is like they wanted to get the max value out of the Aegis that they could. It ended right at the end there. But then afterwards, because he was playing with that Aegis, he didn't have buyback available. And I don't know if it's going to matter, though. I don't I don't. Well, maybe it will. 70 seconds is a long time and Madara pushes really fast if he had like a rapier or something I would say it's like 100% doing it but this this I mean it's still possible it's still definitely possible celery needs to be the man here he's got to keep these creeps alive as long as possible and there's the yule scepter lift up celery going down the roll through coming from toby trying to keep them alive desperately they will lose that shakiro and meanwhile you look at zibe just go hit buildings they're literally gonna go for the end 37 seconds until pl they're going for the tier 4 towers og seed are they gonna be able to sneak this one off no buybacks never hurt so bad they even have the creep wave still alive here. Madara turns, gets the root there onto one, trying to bring him down. Roar forward onto the Ember. He's controlled. He's dead. 90 seconds, no Ember. Toby also under control. They need to do this all alone with the Snapfire and the PL because everybody is dead. All the rest of them. Dude, Chad, this is your moment. This is your time. If you ever are going to try and win a game, it's now, but you're not even going to be alive to make it happen. GG is called as OGC the series. Oh, it hurts, Viking. Oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. God damn.